Hello and welcome to this video on chromosomes, or more accurately, the number of chromosomes an organism has. The average human has 23 chromosomes in two pairs, for a total of 46 chromosomes. Of these, one pair is sex specific, your X and Y chromosomes. While humans have 46, not all species have as many, and some have more. Chromosomes are a thread-like structure wound around the bobbin. They're found in the middle of the nucleus of a cell, or at least those cells which divide and replicate. They're made up of DNA, and they will carry over from parent to offspring. Different species will have a different number of chromosomes. Some species only have one set, and it's not a pair in the males, whereas there is a pair in the females. Some have multiple chromosomes. On occasion, having multiple copies or not enough copies of a given chromosome is also part of a pathology. Looking at this in the context of an animal, there is a very wide variety. Everything from a jack jumper ant, which has two chromosomes in the case of a female, and one for males. A fruit fly with four pairs of chromosomes. This goes all the way up to about 450 in the case of the Atlas Blue Butterfly. More readily comparable species, such as the capuchin monkey, have 54. Chimpanzees, orangutans, and gorillas have 48. Pyale huantiensis, a crustacean, has exactly the same number of chromosomes as a human, 46. Dolphins have fewer at 44, rhesus monkeys at 42, and mice at 40. The smallest number of chromosomes in an animal is four pairs, which can be found in a flatworm. As can be seen, there's a huge range even among what could be called vaguely similar developed or complex creatures, such as other apes. The chromosome itself should be considered as something more like a series of instructional discs. Each one is used to install a relevant part of your body's operating system, for lack of a better word. You only take out what data is needed from each disk, use it, and then put it back. And this is why, as you can see, the number of chromosomes is not a driving factor in the complexity of any of the organisms we've listed. For example, humans have 46 chromosomes in two sets of 23. Similarly complex animals in the form of a mouse have six fewer chromosomes, and some of our closely related ape relatives have considerably more. In fact, some deer have as few as six chromosomes, and fish over 100. The differences between them are stark, but complexity-wise, there's not that significant a difference that would explain a nearly 25-fold increase in complexity. To complicate the picture further, or at least even further, chromosomes, although similar in function, can vary in shape. Chromosomal shape can influence some of the more relevant factors. This is generally a result of some species carrying sex-specific chromosomes that ultimately require some degree of complex interaction to achieve reproductive purposes. In other cases, an organism can replicate its genome and reproduce asexually. This will somewhat change the need for the chromosomal shape. The frequency with which it accesses the chromosome is another factor to consider. A virus has a differently shaped chromosome to a human cell. Ultimately, it is the complexity of the genome that is spooled around the chromosomes that is the important factor in an organism's complexity. Not so much the number of genes or the length of the genome itself, these factors can be somewhat redundant. What is important is just what the DNA is encoding for, and how these differently encoded regions interact with each other. That's why it's nearly impossible to judge one species in comparison to another. Even with the Human Genome Project having been accomplished decades ago at this point, there are sections of what we once thought of as junk DNA that we are only now discovering to be relevant to modern genetics and that those regions where once thought to be junk actually have a more significant role than we gave them credit for. Just because there are more parts or sections to a genome, that doesn't mean it is better or more complex. And this is equally true of chromosomes. 
just because you divide up the instructions for the organism into more parts, and by that we mean more chromosomes, it is not more complex. It's simply more modular in a manner of speaking, and this is often a product of evolution. Our closest ape relatives have two more chromosomes than we do as a species. These chromosomes in humans have in fact merged together being 2A and 2B. We lost them some time back in terms of they became one chromosome, but they still exist as two separate chromosomes in apes. It would appear that whatever pressure drove those to be combined into a single in the human isn't there for apes. And so it's hard to say just because we've reduced the number, we're more complex. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have below.